All right, here we go. <clears throat> All right. Welcome back to Nick Lentz Comic Corner. Classic lesson, non classic. This is episode number 29, 21, uh, and double shot number 28, 15. First viewing X, X Force Epic Collection, Volume 7. And a cable trade. Yep. There is an actual cable trade this time. Not just some stuff. So 67 is basically just a standalone issue before the whole thing operates to a The big thing with this issue is that Danny Moonstone joins up, rejoins X-Force. Leaves the Mutant Liberation Front. And then issue seven, after issue 70, which basically causes half the team to quit the roster... With the exception of Domino, it's like, okay, let's take out all the more interesting characters people like about the series and just, like, here's the thing. Rick, uh, basically, Richter and Shutter sort of left with issue 70. And until they popped up in the second line for X Force, they did practically nothing after this for the next several years. Domino, of course, did appear a little bit in this book after that. But she was also basically just a support character in Cable. Cable had a solo book, so he was doing perfectly fine. Caliban, on the other hand, who quit also with issue 70, he appeared in a few books before he returning in New X-Men. Yeah, he, he's another character who didn't do much after this. Yeah, for the next few years, it's like half the roster did practically nothing. Yeah. So... It's called Zero Tolerance, name it. Yeah, that's the name of the trade here. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah, and then pretty much after all the right members leave, as you said before, we before, continue. Uh, let's talk briefly. Now, by the way, we have John Francis Moore on the writing duties of this book. And if you're really curious, how long did he stay in X-Force? Well, he was the writer since issue 63. I guess he just wanted to take the book a different direction. With the exception of issue 77, he practically was in the book until issue 100. Yeah, that was before Warren Ellis took over the book. By the way, negative one, number one, that was a flashback story where Stan Lee is in the book being Cable. Yeah, kind of in a way, but the main characters are just... Apparently, it's like the first crotch currents of the Proudstar Brothers. Yeah. That's the thing with this issue. And what about 7184? Uh, these issues, it's basically... Oh, let's have the main x members go on a road trip trying to find out what the heck they're going to freaking do. When they're basically just traveling about. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're still X-Force, but basically... The other thing is they have to hit the road, and I was reading this years ago, and I was not a fan of this direction, basically just kicking Cave off the team because of reasons. They also kill off a character in this book, who appeared in negative number one in issue 72, called Michael w w White Cloud. And it's mostly like, this like an artwork here, it's just X-Force versus just some random people. Like... Let's find a guy named Zero, who is a robot from the future, who is from the Mutants book. Which, of course, John Francis Moore brought him back for the book. Yep. Though his previous appearance actually was in the Atkinson miniseries. If you're curious about that, that was a flashback miniseries of Cable he was a kid. There's also a guy named Martin Edward, just as wolf creature guy, just all debut negative number one. It's basically dealing with basically the stuff with Warpath, some of these issues. And then we deal with Strife. Okay, that's a familiar character. Valkyrie Osper is in the book too. And we have Blackheart, Region Fire. You're like, what is this? 
is this X Force? That's the book is called, and then we have them team with and then Cable returns, but very briefly for their because it's seventy five issue versus seventy five, and it's just more of the team just face up against many people. They don't have a headquarters at this point. If you're curious, the headquarters are freaking bowling alley. Yes, for some strange reason. Oh, and Shadow Star returns for one for one appearance here before he just disappears again. Yeah, and it basically, if I, they basically run to arcade. Oh, and I love the cover for issue number uh, seventy-seven. I love this cover because it's just—it's a cover that Adam Padula basically does the cover for. Yeah, it's this very cool cover that basically, well, I think pretty much anything that came out that week basically uh, had this style of cover. Some books, anyways, but not all of them. Yeah, and this is basically just a standalone issue featuring just, well, boom, boom, take, just deal with a little girl. And then we have more Burning Desires by a guy named Region Fire, who is a famous Isa character who didn't really do very much. I barely remember this character. Yeah, when you he, he return to 72, this first appearance of the book is issue 43. And that was famous season for the book. I guess John Francis Moore probably felt, hey, let's bring him back as a recurring villain for X-Force. About some of the issues before basically disappearing. I'll stay with someone called Locus. Who is a, another character famous season created. Who was brought back here? Who also last appeared in issue forty-three? Well, actually appeared in sixty-seven, and appeared in issue like eighty-five. These are just very strange issues per se. It just doesn't feel like X Force to me. That's just the problem with it. I mean, it's not bad. They have an issue here, issue 80, a team with Heroes for Hire and Dar as a Dragon. And deal with the first character of the Pendima. Okay. A character they in this book here. And of course, still there with the Vanisher, who caged for his book as a recurring villain. And all still with this character called. Is this character called Grefont who gets killed off here? Who appearing in books issue 67? So it's like, yeah, New Direction is okay. Also, Domino's back on the roster, but still Cable's not here. Yep. And we also have a guy who becomes Bedlam in issue 83. It's like, oh, let's make the group a traveling group. And Cannibal rejoins the roster with issue 84. Okay. And they have a new group called The Sword. Part of the Damocles Foundation. And they appear twice the whole book. Yep. But that's kind of it discussed here when it comes to X-Force. I would say 6-7 is really good, but then afterwards it becomes okay. Not terrible. It is surprising this book last 120 issues. Yeah, it was shocking. Uh, my guess is probably the reason why John Francis Moore left the book with issue 100 because my guess is the book wasn't selling too well. Yeah, that is just my honest opinion. But who knows? It was late 90s. I guess they wanted to get rid of the Rob Liefeld stuff so badly. Now something a little more interesting we have. Cable! Hellfire Hunt. Here's the cover for it. Yep. Now this book, written by written by James Robinson, Joe Case, Michael Higgins, and Carl Bowlers, artwork by Stephen Platt, Laron, German Garcia, Rick Lenardi, Michael Allen, Ryan Benjamin, and I guess. Oh, by the way, I give the X Wizard Collection a eight out of ten. <laughs> Thank you.
this book contains negative number one I think it's like 48 uh, let's see if I can find it here okay here we go it's negative number one issues 4858 uh, the Machine Man and Cable Annual, and the Machine Man Bastion Annual, along with the one to over and Cable. Negative number one is basically, now this is probably the start of the time period where, for the most part from what I can tell, I think this is when uh, Cable decided to be drawn like, it's like, what, what if basically he was drawn by Stan Lee? Not necessarily... Uh, Jack Kirby. Yep. And the whole thing of this issue is basically deal with Cable's backstory. More of a tag appearance issue too as well. Yeah, and skip over the operations of tolerance issues. Which in case you're curious though, that was from Cable... 45 and it wrapped up with issue 47. And these issues written by James Robinson, which I like the operation of tolerance stuff. And then we get in the Hellfire Hunt stuff, where this is the very historic that debuted the character Irene Merriweather. Yep. Yeah, Irene Merriweather is this female porter who basically starts traveling with Cable and basically Cable in these issues deal with the Hellfire Club. Yep. And the story only lasts from 48 to 53. That is how long the story lasts for. Mm -hmm. And it's a quite interesting story. They also do Apocalypse 2. Really good story arc. I love this story arc. It was amazing. And by the end of it, you have the apparent death of Donald Pierce, a.k.a. the White Bishop. And by the way, she was a recurring character in this book from the moment she showed up, and she was here, into issue 95. Yep, and then she became a recurring character in Cable Deadpool, and then she was brought back in uh, the recent Cable book. Yep. And wrap right this storyline here, basically for the next four issues, pretty much in a way, from issues 55, 58, uh, more like, yeah, 55, 58, basically we also have the Black Panther show up here too, we're fighting Claw, it's like we do more love letters to Jack Kirby, teams up with the beautiful Domino in issue 55 and 56, he works with Black Who Smith. It's a very interesting set of issues. Probably Joe Casey is the one doing the writing here. We even have him face up against Rema Frickin' Tut, a.k.a. Apocalypse. Yes. And this actually is set before his debut as a as Caden the Conqueror. Like, wow. I thought that was really cool. And then pretty much 58 is a prelude to Nemesis Contract. Yeah. Great issues. I think these issues are a lot more interesting than X-Force. That's better. But next comes, basically, we have these two annuals. Which, by the way, this comes at, basically, it's called the Engines of Destruction. Where it's basically, get this, Cable and X-51, Aaron Stack and Machine Man. For Aaron Stack, this comes right after his appearance issue, Avengers. Or basically, they team up to take on Bastion, the main villain of the Operation of Tolerance storyline. 
He had leads into Machine Man and Bastion Annual 98. Two really good issues. Mark England does the cover here. But there is still one more book to talk about here. That book being... Wolverine slash Cable. Or it's basically them teaming up to... <laughs> yeah. It's them teaming up. Now, is this the only one show they have? That's better. Yeah, this is the only one. Where it's basically them working with the Department Age to take on the Vulture. You're thinking, wow, that actually sounds really cool. Yep, and it is. But great set of issues. We also get first appearance of a guy named Frank Rhodes. You're thinking, oh, he's related to James Rhodes? No, not really. He just a quick standalone character. And it's just a fun issue. Mm -hmm. Because Wolverine, did they go to Manjapur? Nope, they go to freaking Canada for the whole, whole book. Which, yeah, book is a lot of fun. I'm kind of surprised they collect this one. Yes, but great issues. I'm going to give this book a 10 out of 10 because it's that damn good. Yep. So yeah, that's particularly a particular view. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, channel notification, do another like button. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. I got a stream new right now, so I'll see you all later. Okay.